Welcome to Community Roundtable. I'm Nick Burns from the Salt Lake Community College Communication Department, and I'm your host as we explore topics of special interest and concern to the residents of the cities and the unincorporated areas of Salt Lake County. Topics that are equally important, we feel, to the general public throughout all of Utah. Today on the show, we continue our series exploring the issues in the cities along the Wasatch Front. Our guest today, Mayor Tom Dolan, he's currently serving as sixth term as the mayor of Sandy City. We'll talk today about how the city is outgrowing its bedroom community label, and we'll talk about why Sandy City calls itself the heart of the Wasatch. Plus, we'll look into the future to learn about Sandy City Civic Corridor, what it is, why it matters. Mayor Dolan, thanks for doing this. I'm glad to be here, Nick. Well, appreciate it. I appreciate it. So sixth term. Yes. And four years each? Yes. So tell me about Sandy when you started as the mayor. I mean, wow. Well, uh, you know, Sandy was in a growing phase. It was still the suburban community for Salt Lake City. Uh, we uh, never had a mayor that was reelected uh, because of that rapid growth. Uh, in 1980, Sandy was the fastest growing city in the nation. And uh, as we grew further and further, we, uh, we looked for a tax base because in order to support the population, we needed to do that. And my goal when I uh, ran for office was to d establish that ta tax base so we could provide the good services that our citizens would enjoy. And you're talking about a tax base beyond just property taxes as, as a bedroom community. Yeah, we have the lowest property taxes in Salt Lake County right now. Uh, our tax base is based on uh, sales taxes. So we, we, uh, I, I continued to try to improve what we were establishing as a major shopping area for the South Valley, and that's Southtown area. Okay, and so in Sandy City, are you mayor and city council or city manager and council? You're, what's your structure? Uh, I'm, a, I'm the strong mayor form of government. I'm, I'm the chief executive officer of the city, and uh, the council is the policy-making body. And you say that with some pride, the strong mayor format. Uh, well, it is. It's uh, for a city of a certain size. I believe it's a more functional form of government. I'm a professional uh, city administrator that handles day-to-day -day operations. Uh, my role in the city is chief lobbyist. Uh, it is. I do cut ribbons and kiss babies. <laughs> uh, I am the face of the city, so it's. Uh, it, I have a lot of duties. I serve on multiple committees and commissions and boards uh, throughout the state as well as the county. So, cook, bottle washer. Yeah, it's full time. A, it's a full time opportunity, and I I recommend it to other cities once you hit fifty, sixty thousand, they should be looking at that because you need a full time mayor. I, I always tell the new mayors that are part time mayors, there's no such thing as a part time. Right, mayor. you're still going to get called at midnight. Yeah, that's right. You're exactly. still going to put in the time. So you mentioned Sandy as a place as a, as a shopping hub. Again, that brings mm -hmm. in sales tax, but you know we just had the state, we just had the Senate pass on pass on voting to allow Sandy or other cities to increase you know, revenue for mass transit, which seems to be something the public wants. Well, I yes, uh, you know, our citizens have always voted for mass transit to improve mass transit. We have four light rail stops in the city right now. And uh, what happened to the legislative session is that uh, there was a proposal to uh, allow the counties to increase the, put on the ballot to increase the sales tax another quarter cent in order to uh, provide more bus service. This would be focused on bus service uh, all alone, not more tracks lines or rail lines, right. but bus services. Uh, it did pass substantially in the House. It did not pass in the Senate. It uh, ended up not being voted on. So what do you make of that? Uh, well, a lot of people ask me that question. I am currently serving as the vice chairman of the Wasatch Front Regional Council. And I, uh, so it's an important issue for us along the Wasatch Front, all of us. I, I just think the legislature looked at it, the Senate looked at it and said they're not ready. They saw it uh, as a tax increase. And uh, I know there's a commitment next year to come back and talk about globally all transportation, uh, both the state, the local governments, and uh, UTA. Rather than doing it piecemeal county by county. Yes. So that's interesting that they would see it as a tax hike since it really would just allow county residents to decide for themselves. Well, there's an argument to be made about if, uh, if, if UTA, as an example, gets more sales tax, it's cutting into the capacity of the sales tax itself. Right now, the sales tax in Salt Lake County total is 6.8%. You add another quarter, we're over 7%. They worry about the uh, competitiveness across the Western United States with the sales tax numbers. So there is a $11.3 billion shortfall projected by 2040 in our total transportation system, and we have to address it. If we don't address it now, we won't be able to have the transportation needs for the population that's coming. So, I mean, 11 billion is no, that's no small change. And that's a pared down number from 18 billion. 
Pared down, how so? Pared down from the fact that if you really look at all the projects that could be built or should be built, uh, th there has to be restraint into how you do this. And this is, it's feasible uh, if certain things happen to raise 11.3 wow. billion uh, over the next 25 years. And that that's surface transportation, trains, tracks, buses, roads, all of it, right? Uh, it's local roads, which are in desperate need. We haven't had a increase in our share of the road tax uh, for 17 years. Uh, originally, the plan was every five years after n 1997, there would be a five cent uh, a gallon gas tax increase to keep up with the needs that were projected then. That never happened. So cities, for the most part, are spending 50 to 60 percent of the road budgets coming out of our general fund. That's the money for our policemen, our firemen, our recreation. And that didn't used to be the case. No, it was, so, it was supposed to be a sustaining for local and state roads. So you and all the other mayors ought to be kind of pissed off about that, I would presume. Well, I don't think we're angry. We, were, yeah. we did support it uh, as the Salt Lake Valley Conference of Mayors. Uh, we endorsed it as the League of Cities and Towns. Throughout the state, okay. we endorsed it. Okay. So when it comes to Sandy itself, Sandy City itself, do you see north-south transportation or east-west as, as the bigger problem to address sooner? Uh, for us, it uh, it's, continues to be north-south. Uh, I, I believe okay. in what's called uh, a satellite cities. Uh, Denver adopted this 25 years ago. In other words, you can't keep putting people for, to work in Salt Lake City and not expect to have traffic problems and continued multi-billion dollar deficits trying to accommodate that. I grew up in Washington, D.C. I saw what it's like to be in traffic jams constantly. In fact, it was one of the reasons I decided to leave 35 years ago. And, and I, I look at this now as we have to address it, the problem that really exists, along the, because we're linear. The whole Wasatch Front is linear. So you have to move people north and south. Now we're at the stage to how do you move them east and west to connect to the, the light rail lines and also the commuter rail lines. That, that has to be a connection, and that has to be by buses. Okay. We are talking with Mayor Dolan about Sandy City today on Community Roundtable. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, I want to ask you about the future, because I know you've got this 30-year plan. Mm -hmm. So keep it tuned. We'll be right back with more Community Roundtable. We are back on Community Roundtable talking with Sandy City Mayor Dolan. So thanks. Where we left off, we were talking about transportation issues, talking about sales tax issues. But if we look ahead, everyone seems concerned that the population's going to double here along the Wasatch Front. It seems to me Sandy's probably kind of built out. So what's it look like for 30 years out for you? Well, we still still anticipate some growth. Uh, however, okay. all, all along the Wasatch Front, it won't be spreading out. It'll be going up. Okay. Uh, we have limited lands. I think we have now 37,000 acres of buildable property in Salt Lake County in the future. We're going to have to start moving up. Envision Utah identified this 10 years ago. Uh, the uh, governors uh, also instituted Utah's future plan with Envision Utah. I serve on the transportation uh, committee there, and we do have to address that. We're expecting by 2050 two and a half million more people. That's very difficult for people to absorb. However, if you look back 30 years, as I'm able to do since I've been here, and see the tremendous growth that we've had, you can now project out. Plus the University of Utah, the federal government, all have tools now that help you project your future and what the world will look like then. And, and so those models are there. We use those models for our 30-year plan to project in the future. So you mentioned this 37,000 acres in the county. Mm -hmm. what's, what's in Sandy? Uh, well, we have, our city is, is, is mostly built out with single family residences. Uh, the opportunity that we have are twofold. One will be some uh, rebuilding, redevelopment of certain older areas. Some will be uh, the uh, opportunity to uh, develop our civic corridor. And the area we've studied and our area of our master plan is between 90th South and 106th South from the tracks line on the east to the freeway on the west. And we're anticipating in, the, in that 835 acres, approximately 15 to 20,000 more residents. And that will come through condominiums, townhomes, apartments, uh, the density that'll be necessary. And we're developing those around our tracks lines, our stations, so, transit-oriented development. Okay, so basically this is the area, I wanna say south of Rio Tinto Stadium and yeah, actually, west of the convention from center. From Rio, Rio Tinto okay. south to the, the uh, end of uh, the mall. Right okay, there. so 
And again, that seems to be the way of the future. Lots of older folks don't want to live in the suburbs. Younger folks don't want to live in the suburbs quite so much. So this makes a lot of sense, it seems to me, going up. What's in that area now that will have to give way to, this, to, to population? Fortunately, we have uh, numbers of parcels that are vacant. Right okay. around the light rail stop at 100 South, we have about 50 acres for development right at that spot alone. Uh, under the uh, Security National, which is where the cemetery is on State Street, behind there, there's 285 units being developed right now. Uh, Hamilton Partners is also uh, working with UTA on a 35-acre site to develop 1,100 apartment units, as well as major office buildings and some retail. So it'll be a mixed use all along that corridor, transit-oriented so that people don't have to have a car. What we're finding is when you do the demographic studies, you're absolutely right. You have older people that don't want the big house anymore. You have uh, single uh, households that don't want a house or can't afford a house. And then you've got a myriad of young people, a whole generation that aren't tied to a big house and a, and a lawn and a yard, uh, but want the convenience of moving by public transportation. Maybe only one car per household. Right, and you can use the car on the weekend to go skiing. You can take the tracks during the week, right? Right, exactly. So how's this development then work? Is this public-private partnership? Do you sell off the land to private entities? How does... I mean, you have this structure for looking 30 years out. How do you make it happen? Some of this is, is already very much pro public property. Okay. Uh, Workers' Compensation Corporation has about 20 acres mm. that they okay. have there. Obviously, UTA with their 35 acres partnering uh, with a private developer. Uh, we've also purchased about 30 acres along the freeway frontage that we will look for developers to develop a product that we want to see in our city that complements our residents' uh, opportunities to develop a uh, an entertainment area in our downtown area. Uh, and we need that vibrant downtown nightlife. Our theme is mountain meets urban, urban meets mountain. We have copyright in the name Ultimate Base Camp. We see our future in the next 30 years, to 2020 to 30 years, of becoming the base camp for the four ski resorts. There won't be that very much development left up in Big or Little Cottonwood Canyon. There just isn't. First of all, they, they, they can't handle more development up there. So we're looking at more hotels and opportunities in our area, along with Cottonwood Heights, Salt Lake City, uh, and others that will people will come to our community as tourists, stay here, and then move up to the ca canyons uh, for their recreation opportunities. Rather than staying in, say, the Monaco and downtown Salt Lake, right? Yeah. Move people south a little bit. It's there, whatever opportunity and price point they Yeah, have. exactly. What do the residents, you know, those folks that have lived in Sandy a long time that are the bedroom community folks, what do they think of all this kind well, of change? Well, we did multiple public hearings. We did uh, multiple uh, planning commission hearings. Uh, we This plan was adopted about a year and a half to two years ago, and it was very much supported. What we're not doing is intruding into the uh, suburban neighborhoods. We're okay. not. We're not. This area is left as a commercial development area, and that's that's one of the reasons. For years, when we do our Dan Jones poll for the city, we've done it for 17 years. The number one thing people like is the uh, shopping convenience uh, of staying in Sandy and shopping in Sandy and living in Sandy. And obviously, they can come downtown to do whatever other events in other places. But convenience is a big thing. People don't want to have to travel uh, long distances, even for their jobs. And that's one of the key components. Of so, this. yeah, that was going to be my next question. Shopping, living, how about working? Well, that's definitely. We have been designated by Envision Utah and the Wasatch Front Regional Council as one of the key areas for future development of employment centers. Uh, about three years ago, the federal government gave a $5 million grant to the university and to uh, the Wasatch Front Regional Council. Five areas were studied, Clearfield, West Valley, Sandy, and uh, we, we've been designated as one of those areas where employment will not only happen, but have to happen. Okay. So plans for that, I mean, what are you... What are you thinking about in terms of bringing in jobs? I mean, certainly if you bring in motels, there's going to be jobs cleaning rooms, but that's not... No, we're talking about yeah. uh, white-collar jobs. Okay. Uh, we have uh, proposals right now for three 12-story buildings. We'll look and see if that's a feasible project. Uh, we met with some developers okay. the other day that have a 300,000-square-foot uh, office building. They're contemplating at the UTA site. Uh, there's already a proposal for a 55,000 office building on that site. And then there's, again, there's myriad of properties. And we, again, will, uh, right now, our, our maximum height for a building in Sandy is the Jordan Commons building, uh, Larry Miller building at 10 stories. We would expect the densities to increase. And that's all over the Wasatch Front. That's not just us. But our average building is five to six stories. 
Well, the cost of the land and the convenience of what people want, living locally, working locally, will drive that up. And I trust your research shows that all those bedroom folks are going to be comfortable with taller buildings around them? Yes. We had proposals three, three or four, five years ago for 40-story buildings. We felt that was too much. We had a developer who was interested in building 25 to 40 stories. The capacity of the land and the transportation is not there. When we started our master plan study, we, st we started with transportation. Uh, if you're going to have this development, if you're going to have these many people living, working, and playing in this area, how do you move them? And that's where we started from, and that's where we decided what is the maximum capacity of this 835 acres. And that's where we built this from. Yeah, okay. Now, our options are, just like every other community in the Wasatch Front, what, if, what do you do? You either plan for it or you do nothing. With, <laughs> with a million more people coming to the Wasatch Front just within the next 20 years, what do we do? Now, two-thirds of, of that growth is our own children. So we have to have places for our children to live, work. And I mean, you could see that being actually... On the most optimistic point, you could see that as being ideal if you've got grandma and grandpa in their suburban home and you've got the kids down along the track station in their town home. I mean, really. In our case, for years, our, our residents have talked about those that have, uh, the kids have grown up and moved away, they're empty nesters, they're in a big house, they don't want to maintain the house or the yard any longer, and they need a product that they can move to mm -hmm. and yet be the, have the convenience of still being in the same area, enjoying their same friends and family. And if you keep that big house, then you've got the kids moving back into the basement, well, that's, right? Uh, well, so that's definitely, we've noticed that, that trend happening in the last <laughs> three years. Yeah. This is Community Roundtable. We're talking with Mayor Dolan from Sandy City. When we come back, I want to ask about this notion of form-based code. Mm -hmm. And again, you, we've been dancing around that a little bit, talking about building heights and whatnot. And also when we come back, I want to ask a little about recreation and golf and so on sure. in Sandy City. So keep it tuned. We'll be right back with more Community Roundtable. This is Community Roundtable talking with Sandy City Mayor Dolan. And Mayor, when we left off, we were talking a little bit about the future. We were talking about this 800 acres sort of right along the Civic Corridor. But you mentioned Cottonwood Heights. There's West Jordan. You're in the middle of, of a whole lot of other cities. And I wonder, how does your vision for the future in Sandy City dovetail with what all these other cities right around you want? Well, we've, since we share the freeway with uh, South Jordan, we've decided to partner up and, uh, with each other. And, and they've seen our master plan. We've looked at their master plan. And we're trying to complement each other. Uh, it's not a com competition. It's something that they have certain amounts of property. They have certain needs. And they have certain wants for uh, their development along the freeway. And, and we're working together to do that. Uh, if, you, if you've noticed, you'll see uh, we have the auto, largest auto mall in the state, and yet across the freeway now there's more auto dealers joining that area. And so it's one-stop shopping. And, 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 we're, and we're definitely working right now on transportation needs connecting the two cities. Well, that makes total sense. But, I mean, isn't there competition for bringing in these white-collar jobs and for the big box stores and whatnot? I mean, that's long been a point of competition among valley cities, it seems. Yeah, it's, you know, we're talking about chasing dollars with sales taxes. Uh, we've established ourselves already as a retail center. South Jordan's doing the same, uh, but further west. Out okay. on, uh, further out on Bangor Highway and such, and they're developing a, a nice corridor out there. But, you know, we, ours is a regional shopping center right now, and I, I think there's only room for one more regional shopping area somewhere in the southwest part of the valley. So, in other words, there won't be the same Home Depot shopper in Sandy as it would be out in south or west Well, the, the Home Depots, and I think yeah. you'll see new Costco, things like that. Yes, they'll, they follow the house rooftops. Okay. More population, they follow those. But I'm talking about the major department stores and, and, and specialty stores okay. that exist in a mall a atmosphere and higher density areas. Okay. So here's a question. You know, we talked about how the, the Sandy City voters seem pretty on board with this, but so often elections and voters you know, the focus gets so today, gimme, gimme, gimme now. Mm -hmm. What work do you have to do to convince voters to think decades out? That seems like a challenge. Well, that's an educational process that we have to be part of. Uh, that's our communication system, our, our city newsletter, our website. Our, we have a whole communication department, which we're expanding now and trying to reach out to residents to, to work with us uh, through the Internet and all the, the new tools that are available. And as much involvement as they want, they can climb on board and be part of us. Uh, and we call it Sandy Now. 
And okay. we, we launched that about eight months ago, and it's been very successful. We're getting good feedback from our residents. They have the opportunity to comment on where, where we're going and what they'd like to see. And then we do our annual survey also. And it's interesting, of all the things you talk about, what's the number one thing people want in our community? And I think you'll find it in many others, is trails. You know, recreation? When when, okay. Recreation trails, because when you build a city in the 1970s and 80s in Utah, no one thought of that. All the new communities have trail systems built in. And those are, those are, that's a major recreation opportunity for us. We have 112 miles of trails planned in the city, partially half built and others to do in the future. Okay. So, and again, back in the 70s, I mean, urban planning was a train wreck. So. I, I lived in, in, yeah. in the Denver area in Littleton, Colorado in the, in the early 70s. They were building trails then. It just wasn't part of the way Utah developed. I mean, we were building roads. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we were building large, sub, just suburban communities that were affordable. Right. And the, the bedroom communities, the right? Bedroom and now you've got to go past that. Yes. So how's, how's this trail system? I mean, clearly residents are on board with that. Everybody wants to bike, push their stroller and all mm -hmm. of that. I mean, that makes total sense when you're not up skiing or, or backpacking or something. How's that work to design that? I mean, where are the trail's going to go and who's going to pay we, for it? Some of, of those, some of those trails will be along major roads and they already exist. Instead of putting in a four or five foot sidewalk, we put in a 10 foot sidewalk. Okay. So people, we have bike, bike lanes uh, we're putting throughout the city. And one of the biggest advantages that the city has is we have Dimpledell Park that runs from border to border in our city. Uh, we are working with Salt Lake County. We'd like to see a paved trail on the upper rim of that park so people oh, okay. can access it for both uh, bicycles, jogging, handicaps, all those kinds of opportunities that would exist. And it runs all the way from the base of the mountains down to the Civics Corridor Center. And then when we, we paid for the underpass at 100 South in front of City Hall, okay. we put a horse trail and a walking trail. And our goal has always been to connect the Bonneville Shoreline Trail, which we're working on now, to the Jordan River Parkway. Running north and south through the city, we have canals. And that's a great opportunity mm -hmm. to uh, either box those canals, some of them have already been done, or to uh, put trails on top of those canals and pave them so people can move north and south and east and west through Dimpledale. Okay. I like. Makes me want to move to Sandy almost. <laughs> um, we've only got a couple minutes left here, and I just have to ask you, six terms as mayor, mm -hmm. seventh? No. You're going to be done? <laughs> oh, yes. I and so what's People next have then? said to me, you said that two terms ago. <laughs> well, yeah, we hear that from lots of folks. But I mean, this is a long time to sit in one chair, seems like. Uh, it's been a wonderful experience. I mean, people in Sandy are, I, I, you know, I know that people think you're supposed to say this, but they really are great people. That's what makes our community so great. We have thousands of volunteers in the city on all aspects of the community, working directly with the city or in volunteer organizations. Uh, it's, it's, it's a stable community. Uh, if you drive through Sandy today, you'll see that there's not a lot of houses up for sale. People are staying in place. And, uh, and it's just a great constituency to work with. It's been a wonderful experience, as I said, for my wife and I and our family. Uh, it's been a challenge. Uh, we're trying to build the commu community of the future for Utah for our residents and have that opportunity to have parks, recreation, entertainment, all those kinds of things, and bringing uh, Real Stadium has been a huge plus for our community. The Expo Center, Jordan Commons, there's so many wonderful features that we'd like to continue on. Our amphitheater is very successful. We have about 40,000 people a year coming to our amphitheater for different shows that we have throughout the summer months. Who do you have real quick this summer? Have you got a schedule uh, yet? Some of the bigger names, Boss Gags, uh, okay. Peter Frampton. Uh, we're working with Donnie Osmond's group right now to see if, if we can uh, do that, that, get that down. We have about 15 shows that we're, we've uh, put on the schedule and we'll be sending it out to our season ticket holders. So last minute I'll give to you, uh, it sounds like you've got a legacy, right? Well, I, you know, I, I, I say this and I, I mean this, about two weeks after I'm gone, people won't remember who I am. And that's okay. I love this about democracy. This isn't about me. It's not about anybody else who gets elected. It's about performing and doing the duties that you're responsible for with your citizens. And it's okay to move forward and move on. You have a successor? Have somebody in mind you want to tap? I have uh, some people that I think will be very interested, and uh, I, I would support whoever is the best candidate. I didn't think you'd give me a name now, but I wanted to ask. <laughs> so real quick, only got 30 seconds. Do you have any advice for Real Salt Lake? They've been doing pretty good, but... Uh, it uh, really comes down, I was so frustrated against their game against the Galaxy, losing with seven seconds left, but they're doing such a great job. I mean, the games are just tons of fun, young families, and we, we're really enjoying them. 
thank you very much. Mayor Dolan thank from you, Sandy Nick. City, appreciate you being here. Thank you for joining us on Community Roundtable. If you have comments, if you have questions, maybe you have an idea for a future show, get in touch with us. The email address, roundtable at slcctv.com. I'm Nick Burns, keep it tuned to SLCC TV.